Welcome to the Friday edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 394, The Friday Free for All. I'm Kevin Coulson. I'm George Conger. Today's May 11th, 2018. Okay, welcome to the Friday show, everyone. We're going to have some fun today. You know, about the time we get to Friday, George has posted like 35 new uh, stories on Anglican Inc., and we have to uh, go through the fun ones. And I'm just going to pull up Anglican Inc., and we'll go through these one by one. But George, how's your week going? Oh, it's been great. Lots of fun. Daughter, what, daughter number two headed off to uh, Australia for uh, six weeks. She flew out, and it's going travel from Melbourne to Perth visiting college friends uh, with some other friends from college well wonderful uh, time you say daughter one and two you, you have twins yes but they're born half hour apart <laughs> and uh, who's one and who's two <laughs> and Laura daughter one graduates from uh, college on Monday so wow. we're heading up at church on Sunday to be at her graduation in Atlanta on Monday I, too, have two daughters that graduated uh, college this week. Uh, Victoria graduated with a master's degree in mechanical engineering, blah, 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 something, 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 management. Congratulations, Victoria, my number one. My number two daughter uh, graduated uh, with a hotel management, baking, cooking, thingamajigger, food management. I put on five pounds. Thank you, Michaela. Congratulations to Michaela also. And Ben will be going to college next year, and that's just that wipes me out. All money gone, you know. We saved up for it. We were planning for it, but it's now about a hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars to send your kids to a state school, George. Crazy. All right, let's move on to the news. Now that we talked about the depressing stuff, uh, this is a Friday free for all. We're just going to talk about. Uh, all the news stories we can in uh, the amount of time we have. You're running off to do some errands like at 11, so we got like an hour? Yes, I'm taking a parishioner to the hospital. Okay, good. We got it going. Uh, biggest story I saw in here was the court blocks a D.C. church from a condo project. Uh, I don't know if people know, pl uh, places like Wall, uh, Trinity Wall Street uh, and other locations within New York have property they can rent out and make money and income because the pews are empty and uh, you don't want empty pews uh, because there's no money for you or the diocese. So a place like Trinity Wall Street brings in millions of dollars in rental fees. And so other churches, when they uh, find themselves in financial neglect or empty, uh, they come up with creative ways to make some money. Uh, there's a church in DC who said, we got some nice property here. Why don't we build condos? George, they got in trouble. I don't know what it is with the Episcopal Church and condos. You would have thought after the John uh, uh, John Bruno affair in Newport Beach and his desire to build condos on a church, they'd get their land. Well, St. Thomas DuPont Circle, very nice part of Washington, D.C., lovely Episcopal Church. It burned down in the 70s. And they've been worshiping in semi-temporary facilities ever since. It's a very hyper-liberal congregation. And in fact, it's, con it's ASA, Sunday attendance, has fallen to about 75 from 150 of past 10 uh, years. Is this the guy who's on uh, Tucker Carlson, this priest? Yes, yes, he was. I and here's <laughs> part of this. This is part. Of, his name is Alex Dyer. Now, there's an acne priest named yeah. Alex Dyer, who this I know. So it's it's a different Alex Dyer. This priest uh, was on uh, Tucker Carlson tonight, the Fox Cable News show, a month or so ago, because at the time the Diocese of Washington passed a resolution uh, saying you're not allowed to call God uh, he. Mm -hmm. You have to use you have to use God's preferred pronoun. Or whatever. No, so you like, can't use his preferred pronoun. You can't use his preferred pronoun. Well, Carlson had him on to talk about his, the diocese, diocesan events. Plus, this church is undergoing a construction project. And on the temporary barriers they have around, Alex Dyer has put up uh, pictures of Jesus praying and bowing his head with little slogans attacking Trump's position on gun control and immigration and all of this stuff. So this is a, a media-savvy priest. Well, uh, basically indicating God hates Trump. Yes, yes. Okay, no. just, just, <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous, but go on. Well, the reason why these barriers were up was last March, March, uh, 2017 March, the parish got permission 
to knock down the remains of its old church that burned down a few years ago, redevelop its property to a seven-story, 56-unit combination church slash condominium development slash commercial shops in a very nice section of Washington, D.C. And they got, they got approval from the zoning board. They got a variance to build this high-rise uh, property. Well, they begin construction, and they're about 60% done when the local residents association files a lawsuit and gets the Court of Appeals to block construction issuing a stop work order because this high-rise will destroy the architectural integrity of this lovely liberal enclave in D.C. Because it's and not a steeple, it's a, it's a seven high-rise condo thing. And the, the result of this is that this church, which only has 75 people and maybe a budget from of 250 to 300,000, is losing tens of thousands of dollars each week in delays for the construction. Now, what does this mean? Well, the Diocese of Washington's not going to bail them out. They're broke. And what this means is that unless this gets resolved, this whole project is going to collapse, and the parish, which put up the property as its half of the deal, while the, construct, while the developer put in the cash and the construction, it's all going to blow up, everybody's going to sue each other, and there'll be one less Episcopal church in Washington, D.C. Ah, oh, it's a terrible situation, but... Oh, there's a bit of schadenfreude involved here. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I should say that. Well, you should. No, it's, it's fine. Uh, let's move on to another story that's going to be fun. Uh, Commonwealths. Uh, as everybody knows, uh, I don't want to use bad words, but England colonized Africa and some of the places around the world. And in doing so, they imposed their church, their policies, their ideology, their politics, and Roads, education, mm, schools, the, yeah, language, laws. yeah, um, and for the most part, uh, sanitation, <laughs> okay, some things. You know, uh, Africa has decolonized itself um, in places, and other places like Australia, New Zealand have you know, bye bye. Uh, but those who remain are now being imposed on the uh, political ideology of the 21st century. The you must obviously have same-sex marriage, you must hate Trump, you must uh, uh, love Iran, all these types of things. And so uh, Theresa May goes over to, or she has the Nigerian people over to her place, or did she go over there? Commonwealth Heads of Government Summit yeah. in London last oh, London, month. That's right. So, I believe there are 53 or 56 Commonwealth nations, uh -huh. former British colonies that gained independence, plus one or two that sort of just somehow wound up in the mix, like Rwanda. Uh -huh. Their heads of government met in London, and Theresa May gave a speech apologizing for British l laws that criminalized sodomy during the colonial area, 8th, 19th, and 20th century. And then she said, you should drop all these sodomy laws, allow same-sex marriage, and be like us and celebrate homosexuality and transgenderism and everything. And this, as you might suspect, caused some people in Nigeria to blow a gasket. Not just the Muslims. No. But the, uh, the Roman Catholic Archbishop, Cardinal Archbishop of, Le of Abuja, and said, this is, you know, why, how, the goal of the British to, lect, to moralize and to lecture us is just, they, he doesn't know why he's surprised, but Britain has decided that these poor benighted savages need to be in, instructed as now what God is doing. You know, there's a new spirit in the world and it's called St. Teresa, and she's telling them that they've got to do gay marriage. And, now, you sort of wonder why Justin Welby hammers the Nigerians from time to time. Well, it's government policy. It, yep. Uh, the bishops there are part of the government. And, you and, know, and one of the things is that uh, the Archbishop of uh, the Anglican Archbishop, Nicholas Oko, has said, look, we should just drop the Commonwealth. I mean, what basically, what does it do for us? It allows our president to have a lovely little vacation in London, and we get to pretend that we're part of this fellowship of family of nations. Yet, in reality, what it is, is the white man keeps telling us poor savages how to live and think. 
We and need do, to get on with life. And they do it with money and influence. They said, listen, the United Nations and the World Health Organization, all the people who have uh, benefits that we can give to your country, uh, if you don't follow along and toe the line of our ideology, you're not going to get these. No more mosquito well, nets, no more health conferences, no more HIV AIDS education. Uh, forget it. Well, things like the Gates Foundation and other NGOs do put these little, you know, if you want our money, you've got to take keep, take our ideology too. And I have to say, we can't just blame beat up on the British. Uh, John Kerry, when he was Secretary of State under the Obama administration, pushed this really heavily too. One of the big changes is that the Trump administration has dropped all of this stuff. Uh, it's night and day. But it's just... Uh, and, Part of the sadness about this is, not sadness, but poignancy, is that the night before the start of the comp conference, Justin Welby gave a sermon at Westminster Abbey where all the leaders were gathered, and he talked about how the Commonwealth is the best hope for the future of civilization, and it civilizes and encourages and builds up the fellowship and community of nations. And then you have the British Prime Minister basically destroy the Commonwealth because she's pursuing a particular British internal agenda she needs to be trendier than thou yeah. to keep the uh to keep the elite london elites happy and here's the th you know people wonder about is the anglican communion going to last is the commonwealth going to last well if you continue to be so bullheaded and culturally tone deaf as the archbishop of canterbury and the british government of course it's not going to survive I wonder if they just think, you know, South Africa is what the rest of Africa is going to be like in, in 10 years. And so try hard, 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 and maybe they'll change their minds. Well, see, I know here's, part, here's part of the thing, you know, yeah. they, the, Theresa May can talk about how, oh, you need to give gay marriages. But she then, you know, she says nothing about the fact that South Africa plans to expropriate white farmland. And, you know, kill the white man uh, mantra that uh, mm -hmm. some of the South African radicals are pushing. That gets no play. Homosexuality, that's different. It is different. Yeah, boy, it is different. But let's move on. Bishop, and I'm reading right here from Anglican.inc. If you guys don't go there, you should. Bishop of Chester denounces U.S. withdrawal from the Iranian nuclear deal. Now, if you guys have not been paying attention, there was a nuclear deal with John Kerry, Obama, uh, the European Union, um, and many others, including Iran. But not the U.S. Senate. <laughs> no, it wasn't a treaty. It was just a deal that said, listen, we don't want you guys to stop making nuclear weapons or pursuing any nuclear weaponry and uh, or advanced nuclear stuff where you would have reactors in your country to stop. And here's what we'll do. We'll take off all the sanctions we've had uh, on your country for the last 12 years. We'll give you back the billions of dollars that we've held in reserve for you. That It's your money, but we'll actually give it back to you. Um, and we're not going to require that we inspect it. We're going to require that you inspect your nuclear sites and get back to us uh, on whether or not you're violating your policy. And this was signed by Obama, John Kerry, many others. Trump decided, you know, it's not it's, the deal for us. It, it was the international equivalent of sending your 18-year-old son off to college with a credit card and not putting a limit on it. No. He said, son, we'll trust you to be wise in your spending. Uh, Kevin, as you've had two children through college, and if I've had two children through college, is that a wise move? Since the deal two years ago, Iran has become more violent has sponsored more terrorism, has put uh, uh, soldiers into Syria, has put rockets into Syria, has caught, you know, just, just damage all over the, the, the globe. Uh, and for the, the, the rightful person like uh, a politician like Trump, he says, bad deal, got to get out. A bishop knows better, George. In the House of Lords, the Bishop of Chester, Peter Forster, got up on May 9th and... Uh, after the government read the formal statement from the sec from the Foreign Office Secretary uh, and other government ministers announcing that the deal was off from Washington, Bishop Foster got up and said, you know, this is going to make things worse. This is a dumb move. Uh, it's, it's a terrible decision. It's only going to empower the hardliners in Iran, and so on and so on and so on. Now, why do we care? 
you know, because there are a lot of kooky British bishops, and why do we particularly care about this particular kooky bishop? I mean, I, if, if we wanted to have a, a website devoted to stupid things said by bishops on politics, of issues not relating to the faith, I, I could We'd be have busy to have se separate long. sections. We have an archbishop section. We'd have a uh, bishop section and a clergy section. And we'd have a special Catherine Jeffrey Shorey page because that gift keeps on giving. <laughs> yes, it does. Well, friends, if you remember, where was that place we went to in Pennsylvania for the ACNA uh, installation? Latrobe? La La Latrobe, La PA. Yeah. The Church of England only had one serving bishop right there who laid hands on Foley Beach. Mm -hmm. and that was Peter Foster. So, folks, this is somebody unt um, it, until yesterday was the one good egg for the ACNA crowd among the Church of England bishops. <laughs> now this guy has sort of joined the chattering classes of Europe and bemoaning the deal, and now he is being crucified. Well, do you get, you know who Andrew, uh, Canon Andrew White is, right? Yes. Okay. Andrew he's a, White, uh, what's a Baghdad. Yeah, I mean, he's a, a missionary. He spent a lot of time in Iraq, uh, in the Middle East, has great relationships with uh, uh, Muslims and stuff like that. And he, he heard about this thing. And he wrote on his Facebook page, I'm going to read this to you. So President Trump has withdrawn from the Iran deal. Britain and Europe thought th uh, the deal was uh, very wrong. I th I'm sorry, I just read that wrong. <laughs> Hold on. So President Trump has withdrawn from the Iran deal. Britain and Europe thought uh, the withdrawal was very wrong. I think what Trump did is totally right. Having worked with the Shia for years and really loving them, I know there is no way you can entrust the Iranian government. And that's the big issue here. Uh, who are you going to trust? And if uh, Ronald Reagan made the statement famous, trust but verify, we can't trust them and we can't verify. But Kevin, you know, that's a wonderful lead into our next story. Because who couldn't you trust for Ronald Reagan? I don't know what. Communists. Communists. Oh, you want to go to that story? Hold on, let me open the page here. Uh, Mayday. Mayday. Now, uh, thankfully, it's been made into a danger call. Uh, Mayday celebrations are the celebrations of the ideology of Karl Marx. And uh, I don't know if people paid much attention to history. I'm a, a big fan uh, of history. The ideology of Marx, uh, and uh, which is communism, Marxism, you can include socialism, you can include so many different branches uh, that go out to um, it's better if the government owns it and runs it, uh, has killed 105 million people uh, in the 19th and 20th, uh, 20th and 21st centuries. Astonishing, mm -hmm. and so and we want to celebrate that. Don't, don't take it from us. I mean, they're friends. I know there are. St I know there are still people who only know the only know what they know because they went to an American high school or college, and they're still being told that communism just was never really properly tried. Just everybody kept doing it wrong. Well, as Kevin said, a hundred million people died during the experiment. Well. On May Day in Ceylon, in uh, Sri Lanka, the uh, Workers' Christian Fellowship held their annual parade, trade union parade. Workers' Christian Fellowship is uh, sort of an Anglican with other Protestant groups that uh, seek to combine the teachings of Christianity and Marxism plus Buddhism to throw in for good effect. And they had their March May Day Parade, and the story was that the Sri Lankan government said, could you move the date of the parade because it's on the same day as a Buddhist festival and the Buddhist monks be mad that you're marching that day. And the Christian said, no, we're going to march anyway. Well, if that's all what there was to it, then eh, it's a mildly uninteresting story. But what makes a story great, folks, is the picture. <laughs> you really need to go to Anglican Inc. and look at the picture of how the priests are vesting one of the, the leading the procession is the retired bishop of Kurunagala, uh, Kumara Ilana Sangalwe. I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, that's close enough. He was a former member of the ACC Standing Committee. So this is one of the leaders of the Anglican world. He is wearing a cope, a red cope, with a gold hammer and sickle on each side of his chest. 
and the stoles all the priests are wearing were red with hammer and sickles. And this could be a bad Monty Python skit. It's so were bad. it not true? Were it not the picture? In, if you don't, if you, if you don't have the photo, uh, it well, just they're, they're looking at it right now. I'm putting the photo right here online so people can see what the Anglican Communion is now celebrating. This is a leader, folks, a mm. leader of the Anglican Communion Standing Committee. Here is somebody, I mean, this is so, I'm speechless. <laughs> I really am speechless. It belongs in a Friday free fall. You know, you have watched uh, Gavin and I talk about uh, how Justin Welby teach, uh, treats people with corruption differently. Uh, there's obviously corruption in the uh, Archbishop of York's office dealing with uh, priests who have defiled the office and the paperwork gets lost. Whereas uh, former Archbishop uh, George Carey loses his ability to operate or be licensed in all of England because he followed the laws of the day uh, in England and uh, didn't uh, pursue justice the way uh, Archbishop Welby th uh, thought it should be pursued. We now learn from Hong Kong, another leader in the Anglican Communion, that there's corruption in the church, George. Uh, we have a story in Anglican Inc. Police investigating the Diocese of Hong Kong and its Archbishop uh, Paul Kong. A Chinese language uh, online news service last month did an investigation into clergy sexual abuse and they found two people who were abused by a priest in the Diocese of Hong Kong uh, and these events took place in 2004 and 2007 and church leaders, lay leaders, went to the diocese and to the provincial secretary and to the Archbishop Paul Kong and said look this guy's molesting people and Paul Kong and the diocese did nothing because the police, the people declined to actually file a formal criminal charge Oh, no criminal charge, we're not going to do anything. Yeah. And this priest was left in office until he retired. Now, the, and last month, after the, the day after the story was released, then the Diocese of Hong Kong handed their file to the police so that they could investigate it. And they said at the time, well, it's now that the victims are willing to go public, we'll let this be investigated. Now, George... Uh, if you've been watching the secular news, you see uh, the CIA nominee is being beaten up for having had a minor role in the interrogation of Al-Qaeda prisoners after 9-11. And at the time, that was considered legal and moral. But uh, times have changed and the rules have changed, and now that particular form of interrogation is considered torture, not allowed. And the people who approved it back way back then like Diane Feinstein, senator from California, are now attacking this person for doing what they approve for her to do. Um, in other words, they're sort of judging people today by the standard, uh, judging people today by, judging people's past actions by today's standards. Correct. That's what Justin Welby has done to George Carey. He's laicized George Carey for all intents and purposes, forbidding him to act as a bishop and a priest. For, because he doesn't live up to modern standards for actions Kerry did or did not do in the early 2000s. And I wonder if that same standard is going to be applied to Johnson Tomlow, the Archbishop of York, who has credible accusations as under police investigation for covering up sexual abuse, and now the chairman of the Anglican Consultative Council. Credible accusations being investigated by the police for covering up and taking no action against child abuse. Now, Hong Kong law, I don't know how different it is from American or British law, so there may be no criminal liability for failure to report and failure to act and failure to do all this. But more well be on his high horse over people like George Bell and George Carey and his silence over John Santamu, now is he going to be silent about Archbishop Kwong? I guarantee it. Uh, you know, and I can't think of any time in the last 40 or 50 years uh, with archbishops of Canterbury that there's been this level of hypocrisy, you know, in treating people differently. Um, well, I, I, I want to, and I want to talk about the hypocrisy because every so often, uh, hypocrisy, it's not so much hypocrisy, I don't know how to describe it. Justin Welby, I think, means well in his heart. And yes, I'm not I, talking I, about him I as agree. a human being. 
you know. And uh, when he speaks up about corruption and the persecution of certain minorities, I'm all for him. I think it's wonderful. But then he's silent on other issues. I'll give you an example. The Bishop of Bow in West Africa, Emmanuel Tucker, is currently on his currently on trial for stealing the money sent from Britain to uh, Sierra Leone in the wake of the Ebola crisis of 2015. Bishop Tucker was brought to General Synod in 2016 by the USPG and lauded, this is the face of the church in action in the world, helping people overcome the stigma and fear of Ebola, telling people this is not witch doctors but a virus. Well, it's all lies. Bishop Tucker stole, Bishop, four of his diocesan assistants have already been convicted and sentenced to three years imprisonment. Bishop Tucker's trial continues. He may be found guilty. He may not be found guilty. So these allegations are still alleged as Kim. But all this money sent has been stolen and not used for the purposes. And we'll hear uh, words from the ACC Secretary General and from the Archbishop of Canterbury about how terrible it is that we don't have uh, effective uh, church leadership on issues of gay rights in Africa, but they say nothing about real life and death issues like stealing Ebola money. Yeah. No, like I said, it's it. I I've not seen this level of hypocrisy in, you know, and I love history in a long, well, in the church, long time. We see this level of it's in politics all the time. Kevin. Sure, yeah. It's it's the cultural norm in politics, but yeah. see, that's that's the killer is that. It's not that the church is being salt and light to the world. It's that the political world is being salt and light to the church. Our church is taking on its leadership, the same attitudes and mannerisms as the political classes. So now you, you, we're moving on to a non-Anglican ink story, if you want to go this way. Are you talking about the Met Gala here in New York? I, I know. Well, I, I saw a picture of Madonna with crosses coming out of her head, and I, that just scared me right there, so I didn't go any further. But, uh, yeah, if you guys want to have fun about uh, uh, the church uh, absorbing culture the way culture wants it to be absorbed, uh, just uh, Google Met Gala and look at Cardinal Dolan and uh, just the embarrassment last week to the Catholic Church. George, it's been a fun, freaky Friday. Let's see. Corruption, <laughs> communism, <laughs> financial irregularities. Oh, it makes you glad to be alive and be an Episcopalian it's or an Anglican. Well, Anglican yeah. Okay. Uh, episode 394. We need you to like the episode. Uh, even if you didn't like it, just for our benefit, like it. Uh, subscribe. Uh, as you've probably noticed, you're not getting emails anymore. I need you to click the subscribe button on YouTube. Many of you have. We're almost to 3,000 subscribers. I need you to share it. You don't have to admit that you watch it. You say, oh, look at this crap I found on YouTube and, and, and share it. And then comment. Nobody commented on the last episode I did with uh, um, uh, David Old yet. So uh, do some comments. We read the comments. Sometimes we read them on air if they're really good comments. Wouldn't that be cool if you had your comment read on air? I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Conger. And you've been watching episode 394 of Anglican on script.